I also have questions about um, uh, community. Do you have anything else, Del? No, that was the only communication I had. The question I had is on cut. Uh, last month, uh, actually, Michael Doyle's uh, tapes helped me a lot. I watched the entire, this week I watched the entire uh, uh, meeting from the last meeting and, and noticed that there was nothing mentioned about letters from HUD. Uh, we got no communications from HUD. I mean, there was nothing mentioned at all. As it turns out, though, we did receive a letter on the 10th demanding, um, talking about outrage from HUD that they wanted to. Uh, uh, response from Misha within five days. Isn't this the sort of letter you should have brought up to us, um, Bill? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, I did describe that letter in the me in the meeting. It was a very terse letter from Mr. Sawicka of the HUD program office. Uh, I watched the tape. I, I didn't see that. Say that again. I watched the tape, I didn't see that. There was certainly nothing that communication and compliance. There was nothing. No. Check the record. Well, hold on, because I, then, then maybe, was it, was it my it's email? The, it's under, no, it, it wasn't in communication, but it is under where you talked about the corrective uh, uh, action plan. You did reference the letter. But, um, so it's not under communication. Didn't we have got a copy of the letter, though? We since have provided you a copy of the letter, and it's, it yesterday. was the most rote of letters. Five-day demand letter is, to me, a pretty serious letter. Can you explain that, Peter, what that letter is, please? Uh, this is a letter where there was another letter from the second the second letter of fact that I was also going to ask about was the uh, this is a letter from the secretary of uh, HUD himself, Sean Donovan. And uh, both of them described the corrective action in Norway as being insufficient and that uh, they express outrage and that uh, the rule uh, provide specific action, taken a corrective action plan, and detailed response to respectively requested within five business days. So, I mean, obviously, high intensity, urgent, sort of young supplies. And the board never saw it. Never saw it. Yes, you have. Yeah. Oh, we have now, now that we asked for Well, that letter came after the board meeting, and I The letter came it on January 10th. The board meeting was January 20th. Um, you're mixing, you're confusing two letters. The letter of January 10th uh, from Robert Sawicka is two paragraphs. We are aware that Maine Housing has been working diligently to address the housing choice voucher issues that were reported on October 27th in a shocking expose in the Norway Advertiser Democrat. As the funding agency, HUD was outraged that federal funds were spent allowing subsidized tenants to live in these conditions. It's imperative that Maine Housing provide our office with a comprehensive written response pertaining to these egregious violations. We did that, and we have sent both to you and then the letter, the second letter that you're referring to, I think, is um, the letter uh, from Secretary Sean Donovan to Senator Collins. And that came after the board meeting on January 30th, and that has been forwarded to you. How did we discover that? Yeah, how, how did we, Peter, how did we, well, first of all, the second letter from HUD effectively said, what? Second letter was from the uh, secretary himself, and that was to send it to Collins' office. That's how we found out about the first letter. So we did find out about it through the housing authority, we found out right through Senator Collins' office. Correct. Okay, and it said that did what? Second letter said that uh, they apologized to Senator Collins. They were working. Um, you all, you have copies of this yeah. now, and that uh, they were working diligently with Misha to resolve the shocking and outrageous problems in Norway and that, that Misha's initial response was insufficient and that they would have contacted them uh, that they wanted more uh, So action. make sure I understand this correctly. The fact that there was a letter from Hunt saying that 
Maine State Housing's corrective plan was insufficient. And this was not given to the board. We found out about this through Senator Collins' office. Is that correct? That's, that is, that part is true, but the insufficient quote is in the Senator Collins letter, and Dale is correct, that is after our last meeting. My concern was, I was even looking back to September 28th, I didn't even realize that Misha's in non-compliance with my, and I looked at the October meeting, and I couldn't find anything about the September 28th non-compliance letter. But what I'm getting at is I want all letters to be applied, especially ones that say action within five days presented to the board. I mean, that is, I would think, a no-brainer. Of course. Um, and so that letter that's, to me, was a serious letter, very similar to the Chom letter. It's just, that's the reason. Which I think, excuse me, I think it makes total sense. If we get a letter from, from HUD that says, please respond within five days, that's something that should be shared with the board. Does anybody on the board disagree? We have the letters. We have them now, Don, because I found out about them through Senator Collins' office and we asked them. That's how we got them. Do we have what they've known about. Do you know? Do um, you know can, about can I do a time thing here? Um, we got the Sean Donovan letter forwarded from the senator's office as well. I did not get that letter, except that her office gave it to me that. on the 30th. On February 1st, I sent you an email describing everything and, and attaching uh, all those documents, the corrective action plan, which you had approved in the prior meeting and which we sent along to HUD and which they have now uh, sent back to us with just small changes, really, uh, and revisions, and which is what Peter, you and I, I have already signed um, off on. And they're requesting us to sign this, saying, yes, we are going to do this corrective action plan. But as you know, we're halfway through doing that corrective action plan. and. Um, yeah, all I'm saying is we had a letter, we didn't get it. We didn't see it. The letter was sent the, on the 10th. January 10th. The January 10th letter was sent on the 10th. We had a meeting on the 20th. It was a serious letter. And at that meeting, if you watch the tape, it's unquestionable that it's, everything is fine, everything's hunky dory. But in, in real life, we had a letter that said, This is not hunky dory and responded in five days. And that's the sort of thing, as a board, we have to know about. And that's all I'm saying. Okay. And I'm gonna that, not, that was an oversight, but if you'll recall, I don't think anyone at Maine Housing was saying that things were hunky-dory. Hunky-dory is an right, We got right on the substandard housing issue. We went the next day. We responded <clears> appropriately. We, we had a correction action plan a month or two months before I'd asked for it. You had seen it. You had approved it. I, I, I will absolutely send you every letter that we get from HUD the minute we get it. Thank you. All I want to say is please can we get letters from HUD, yes. the serious letters. And in, in, in that regard, did did the board get the September 28th non-compliance letter? Do you know we're in non-compliance? Does the board know this? I'm just kind of curious on that. What are you looking at? I Voluntary Compliance Agreement entered into the Department. According to the agreement by the 13th, you'll provide the Department with your first report and the Committee of the Housing Authority. That's what it was, Section 109, Title VI. Yeah. I just want to know if this is a I, I don't have this letter. Uh, well, so you signed it, but it's, uh, it's a store. I just, as I was going out the door, hmm? I don't you don't know? Okay, that's what I mean. I'll, I'm, I'll get you information about this. Can we make a policy that any letter we get from by this that you sign for non-compliance or voluntary compliance or that involves any sort of disciplinary action that we can see immediately? Well, this is maybe your... This was signed this by Marcella Brown, not by me. The compliance agreement attached to sign Yes. This is, this is federal taxpayer money flowing through Main State Housing to help provide Section 8 housing for the most vulnerable folks in the state of Maine. I think it's, it's, it's really important for this board to make sure we see any communication if we're not in compliance with how we're spending that taxpayer money. 
Can I ask our council to respond? Uh, yes, I believe that refers to a voluntary compliance agreement that we entered into with HUD uh, quite some time ago, and the board's been briefed on that. That dealt with uh, accessibility issues uh, overall, and as far as throughout the throughout the uh, portfolio, uh, we worked with HUD down in Boston uh, and framed the voluntary compliance agreement. Uh, on and what we would do uh, in order to make sure that our uh, facilities and our portfolio uh, met uh, accessibility issues. When was when was the board briefed on that? I think back last it was quite some time ago, last summer or the or even before that. So before this new board was here. Uh, you were here. No, I, I no, I think it was not necessarily. I think it was uh, during the year. year. I think it was during uh, you know, the year 2011. Okay, so the other well, four, we came four members so. came in on October. That letter is in that compliance period, September 28th. So we were all here in October. We didn't right. know about it. Um, Wait, Peter. Sherry said she didn't know about it. So that's what I'm talking about. Peter, this is yeah. a very organized little packet. Um, where did you get it? And and it would have been good to know that you had concerns about this. We could have explained it to you. It, it, we can, so that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up with the HUD letters that I think we should always get copies of. And that, I think that's a serious HUD letter. And that was just another, I was wanted to know, since that was my first meeting, as you recall, I had a meeting at 10, not at 9. So I might have missed it. That's why I was asking. That's why I asked Sherry if she'd ever seen it. And um, I, I, I just, this is something we've been difficult. working on for six months with them in, in, a, in a cursory okay. review of our development projects. If I'm correct, Dan, it turned out that some, we were, we were interpreting a part of the regulations differently than they, and they wanted to have accessible apartments built in to some buildings that had already been built. We entered into negotiations with them, and this is the voluntary agreement. We, how far back do you want us I to just, go and inform I, you? All I want to know is that, all I want to make clear is that if we get serious compliance letters, we can let us act within five days, that is important we obviously should get copies of them. Peter, I, not. I know we're going to have a very brief audit report yeah. later, but we did meet as an audit committee the 13th of February with uh, Linda, uh, John Turner, Don Capaldo, and so, and one of the items that we did talk about was the need to make sure that we're getting uh, timely communication on issues that may come up. I think you, know, you and I have talked, and I'm sure this is true for everyone else, but it seems like you can't go anyplace without people asking you questions about main state housing. And if we're not always in the loop, all right, people are telling us things we don't know, and that's very difficult. Uh, it's difficult for us to either have a position or defend this, the housing authority or whatever because we just don't know. And the, uh, the recommendation from the, uh, the audit committee uh, will be that uh, we need to be promptly notified, at least I need to be notified if it's any, anything that may be in the audit <coughs> area, so that we can quickly make a decision whether all the commissioners need to be notified so that they'll be aware and won't be caught by surprise. This may not exactly fall into that category, but it is an example that the housing authorities under so much scrutiny, I and mean, you can see here today that anything that's going on, we should err on the side of more communication with the commissioners rather than less communication. And, and we can certainly give you an update uh, as to the underlying what agreements we're operating under, uh, and sort of a particular type system as to when different reports are due uh, to show that we're complying with the compliance agreement, uh, and an update as to what the Coming for That'd be great. I just we just want to get copies of Sure. 